All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Peak to Middle School. My name is Narwhal, and today I'm here by myself. Kyle is not here because when I'm recording this episode, it is currently the beginning of November, and I'm recording this as a backup episode in the event that something goes terribly wrong. You know, if I'm crossing the street, I get hit by a drunk bus driver and I break both my pelvises. That's one scenario. Or, um, you know, Kyle gets malaria. That's another totally possible scenario. Uh, you know, I realized I have to account for the situations when maybe things will go wrong and there's just nothing you can do about it. And I want to be prepared because I am not willing to miss a Monday or a Thursday for the next year. We missed one in 2019 and I'm not going to let it happen in 2020. That is my promise to you guys. Actually, that's a thinking about it now. That's a really scary promise to make, but I truly believe that one of the biggest things to growing our podcast and this brand and trying to make a fan base that truly is passionate about our content is that we have to be consistent. We have to deliver on what we say we're going to deliver. Um, because I feel like a lot of YouTubers, they'll get this like spike or they'll make a video that kind of get gains them some traction. And for some reason, like the people that can blow up are people that stick with that, with that wave and they ride it out and then it just, it never stops. But with YouTube and just social media, you really got to be prepared to just always keep it going, which is scary. But that's why I'm doing an episode like this that I'm just going to store them on my hard drive um, just in case something happens. So whenever you guys listen to this, uh, how's it going? I hope it's going well. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good day. This is the first time ever in peak to middle school history that there's a one person podcast. Um, I don't know. I wanted to mix it up partly for myself. I think it's obviously going to be entertaining for you guys, but also for me, I just, I don't know. It kind of tests my skills, sees, whoa, sees it, it tests to see if I can keep a podcast going by myself. I've never tried it before. This is literally the first take. So, um, I guess diving right into it. Um, this is not going to be an hour long episode, by the way, I, I doubt I could keep this going for an hour. And I honestly think that the the magic of the show is the dynamic between Kyle and I. And so I don't want to like drag it out, but I obviously I think it's going to be entertaining. So unless you are a patron, um, you guys don't get to see any behind the scenes for the most part. But if you are a patron, you can pledge five, 10 or $15. And at certain tiers, you get access to different things. And one of those things is like a deleted scenes and bloopers video, because it's not just one continuous take. Like for example, I guess a good example is the biggest podcast in the world, which is the, the Joe Rogan experience. And he, it's a live stream. So there's no cutting it. There's no editing it. You know, if they stumble on their words or if there's like a long pause, they just leave it in. And that in and of itself is a truly an art form. Like I don't think that's not possible with like a two person team. You need someone to be like to lie in order to live stream it. But for us, um, we're still getting better at hosting it and there's a lot less cuts and things taken out than there were in the past, but there's still times when, you know, we forget what we're going to say, or we have to go transition to the segments, but we forget what our, what our first thing is. And so there's times when we do cut it, but the whole goal is to make this feel like a continuous hour and a half or hour and 20 minutes or whatever. Um, so you guys can feel like it's not, and I don't think that that is making it fake. Some people might say that that's kind of filtering it, but I think it's just honestly making it a more enjoyable and easier experience to listen to. Um, but when it's by myself here, I have nowhere to cut to, like there's no second angle. Cause the whole idea is that, you know, if I'm talking and then I, I mess up and I want to cut it out, I have to cut over to, to Kyle's angle, right? Because, um, for the video version, it wouldn't make sense if I'm talking, then it just cuts to me saying something else because you can tell that there's a cut. Anyways, you guys probably don't care, but this is going to test my skills here. So what I, what I wanted to say actually is the dynamic between me and Kyle is like, I feel like I'm a better host and Kyle is not that Kyle's not a good host, but I mean, that's my strength is being a host kind of guiding it, um, transitioning from one section to the next, knowing when to interject, when to add things and knowing when to kind of move on. And obviously Kyle does that too. But my point is Kyle is a lot more of the comedic brains to this. Um, it's just something that 
is a natural gift to him. Obviously, I don't think he has like a desire to do stand up comedy or stuff like that. But I mean, he could if he wanted to. But he's just much more witty and fast on his feet. And like, there will be a lot of times when I'll be talking and telling a story, and Kyle will just say something like, "I don't, I can't even think of an example." The other day, I was telling a story, and he said something like, "Oh, like that must have sucked for that blind guy," or something like that. But in the moment, I didn't even notice it. But then when I go and edit it, it's such a funny like remark, and it, it adds a lot to the story. And probably for you guys listening. You probably always hear Kyle say stuff like that, but in the moment, I don't even notice it. So I'm just not very witty. I've said it before. That is a trait that I I desperately wish I could develop and get really good at because it helps in everything in life. If you can just be fast on your feet and like say something to make someone laugh or even if it's something sassy, that'd be awesome. And I feel like I just don't really have that yet. But um, anyways, so hopping right into it here. The first thing I want to talk about is um, obviously by the time you guys see this, it's already probably been out for like six months to a year. But when I'm recording this, Disney Plus just got released, which is at the time, it's the newest streaming service. And I don't necessarily want to talk about Disney Plus in and of itself um, because it's just like a streaming service. You can look it up. You can see what they offer. But people are really excited about it. But I saw a tweet today and it was some lady that said she listed every single actually here I'll, I'll pull it up real quick but she listed the price of every single streaming service so she says uh hulu with no ads or is uh is 13 dollars. netflix is 12 dollars. hbo now slash hbo max is 15 dollars. disney plus is seven dollars amazon prime is nine dollars cbs all access six dollars <laughs> They say eGirl Premium Snapchats, $2,654. Total is $2,716 a month. Um, I mean, it's a joke. That one is a meme. But I've seen other tweets where people are genuinely saying, like, if you add up all these different streaming services, you're not going to be saving a lot of money, right? So one thing that just kind of like I don't understand that frustrates me um, is that people are upset that like, not necessarily upset, but I guess... It's getting to a point where you're going to have to pick and choose which streaming service you want. And people are like, oh, well, like, what's the point of, like, getting rid of cable because you're just going to be paying a shit ton more to get all these streaming services? And I'm like, I'm just mind blown that people are actually upset about that. Like, that's literally the whole point of budgeting and, like, saving money and prioritizing things that you need to buy. There's literally, even when it was cable, you can always spend money on other shit to watch. Like back before the streaming services, you pay for monthly cable, but if you want to watch something else, you like would go rent a movie. That's more money. You go see a movie in theaters. That's more money. It's like, yeah, if all these streaming services are so expensive altogether, you you just don't buy all of them. People make it sound like they have to get every single streaming service. They need Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. And they're like, oh, it's just unfair. Like, like it's just messed up because now I'm spending more than I spend on cable. And I'm like, no, you just maybe just only get Netflix and Amazon and just don't get the other ones. (laughs) It just just seems like a silly complaint to me. Um, Something I've wanted to talk about for a while on the podcast, I just have never got around to it with Kyle, but I'm not in college anymore. But one thing that always bothered me in college is people would always complain about like, oh, I I don't have any money. Now I get that. Like if you're, if you're paying your own college tuition, you're going to try and limit the amount you spend all the time. Um, And even if you're not paying your own tuition, you still probably don't have a lot of money. And even if you're working a part-time job and you're in college, nobody's making a lot of money in college. That's my point. So I get it. But what bothers me is when people complain about not having any money yet they just spend money on the stupidest shit. Like for example, if you're a college student and you smoke a lot of weed, that's fine. Smoke all the weed you want. I don't give a shit. I live in Seattle. Everybody smokes weed here. Over the course of a couple years, you're probably dedicating quite a bit of money to it. Now, if it's just like a little bit of money, every paycheck, it probably doesn't feel like that much money, but if you come to me and you complain about how you don't have any money or you can't 
go to this movie tonight with our friends because you don't have money for it or you're trying to save money. Like, you would have money. You've probably spent $4,000 on weed over the last few years. So you have the money. You're just spending it elsewhere. So don't complain about not having the money if you have the money, but you spend it on stupid shit. Now, if, if you truly don't have the money because you're spending it on rent and food and gas and bills and things that need to be spent on that is a valid excuse but it just it it's always bothered me people are like oh i don't want to go there i don't want to do that i don't have money it's like you do have money you just bought um you know fucking air well i just bought airpods but like i didn't need to buy airpods and i have enough money to where i this is not to sound like an asshole at all i don't have a lot of money but i'm at a point where i had enough money that i can afford to buy airpods and do the things i want to do so I don't know. You guys obviously get what I'm saying, but it's always just rub me the wrong way and I, I get frustrated with it. Another thing that I thought we should talk about, this is actually a good transition, which I feel like going into 2020, the transitions on the show need to get better. They need to be more seamless. I think people appreciate our show, like the raw authenticity of it, how it is, but I do think there's a lot of room to improve regardless. But talking about my frustration, um, since I'm by myself here, I think it's a good time to be critical on myself because Kyle isn't here to tear me apart with me. You know, if I'm trying to be critical on myself and be like self-constructive, is that a word? Self-destructive? <laughs> no, that's not the right one. But when Kyle's here and we're both tearing me apart, you know, it's a bit much, you know, it can hurt sometimes. I might act like it doesn't hurt, but then I go inside, I cry myself to sleep at night. You know, so when I'm here by myself and only one of me can tear me apart and I know my own limits, so I'm not going to tear me apart to the point where I'm going to cry. You get what I'm saying? So I wanted to talk about some character flaws here that maybe you guys have seen over the last year or two years, because I don't know when this episode is going to go up. But th when I'm recording this, uh, November uh, 12th of 2019, one thing that I truly want to get better at is not getting frustrated so quickly. I get, I'm a very chill person. A lot of my friends have actually told me they've never seen me mad ever, but other friends that have known me for a long time, like Kyle, Shim, Willig, who I see a lot, they've seen me mad a lot, but it's like, I'll only get really mad with certain people in certain situations. Like, I'm either pretty chill, pretty happy, or, like, really grumpy. And um, I realize people don't like when I'm really grumpy because it just ruins it for everybody. So, I'm making a conscious effort to just take a chill pill every once in a while. But I wanted to dive in partly for myself so that I can go back and, like, listen to this when I'm editing it and realize what causes it. Because I feel like if you can realize what causes your problems and you're aware of them, you can maybe avoid them. You know, so this is going to be kind of a, a rant here about myself. You know, we've got comments about how people want to learn more about us, like personally, and not just like the things that happen to us or the stuff we talk about and just fuck around. They want to know, like, who are you? So I'm pretty chill. Like I said, one of my friends, Jordan, she told me that not Shim, a different friend named Jordan. She told me, I've literally never seen you mad. I can't even imagine what you're like mad. And she, she was serious. But then there's Kyle who he said it before. But when I get mad, I like people are scared for their life around me. Not I'm not going to go stab someone or like, you know, choke someone out. But it's just like I turn into a rage monster. Um, now, let's let's try and get to some of the source of those those rage monster moments. One is if I tell somebody something, right, anything, if I say um, okay, I need you to be here at like 10 a.m. on Tuesday, okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, if you think, if I tell you and you think you're going to forget, what I expect or what I would do, what I think the smartest thing to do is to say, okay, I'm probably going to forget. Let me write this down. Let me put it in my calendar. Let me make a reminder, okay? Like, whatever. I do that all the time. I have like hundreds of notepads on my phone of different reminders because I know I'm going to forget something or I know I'm going to lose something. So I'll write it down. Now, I think since that is my mindset and that's how I operate, when I tell somebody something, 
and then they come back and they like need me to tell them two or three or four more times it it just i have no patience for it and i don't know why like i need to develop some patience for that but it's like in my head my logic is what the fuck were you doing the first time i told you and then if you come a, a third time what the fuck were you doing the second time i told you like are you just not listening it it goes back to what I said about um I have a big thing with like personal integrity. I I don't even know if that's the right term, but I've talked about it on an episode a while ago with Kyle, but if you say you're going to do something, unless something comes up where you physically cannot do it, I I have very little like leeway or acceptance for someone who like doesn't do it. And I I know it's not fair because there are times when someone says they're going to do something and things happen, but and, and I mean, I'm also a hypocrite for that because there's a lot of times when I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it. But I think my anger for that stems from myself because if I tell myself you're going to upload an episode every Monday and Thursday for the podcast, like I'm going to do it. And that's just how I am built mentally. That's how I was raised. I think I got it from my dad. My dad is truly the hardest working person i've ever met and everybody says that about their parents but i don't know i've never i've never seen anybody that works harder than my dad he he when i remember when i was younger my dad has two fake hips both his hips are just metal they're totally fake and he would and he's old too like old for a dad i'm 21 and he's like 65 or something so growing up like he would literally be gone that from the and he does construction manual labor all day so when i would wake up to go to school he would already be gone at like 6 30 in the morning when i went downstairs and then i would get back from school sometimes have basketball practice get home from basketball it's like four or five o'clock and he's like not even home yet he's still doing construction some days he would get home at like six seven eight o'clock at night could barely walk and then would eat dinner go to sleep and just do it all over again and it's one thing if it's like a desk job, but when you're doing manual labor, like I'll work with him for one day and I just, I fucking hate it. I, <laughs> I have so much respect for people that do construction because that shit is just so unfun and just brutal. And you're like, your knees hurt, your back hurts so bad after one day and he's done it his entire career. So point being, my dad works really hard and I learned from him that if he said he was going to do something, he's doing it. And if he asked you to do something for him or help him with something and you didn't or you didn't like keep up your end of the deal, it's just not acceptable. It's like there's if you truly can't do something, if I ask you like, hey, can you be here at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday or 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, like we said before, and they say, yes, I'll be there. I expect you to be here because that's what you said. And I don't know why that I guess that just carries a lot of weight to me. But if I say, can you be here at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday and you say yes and you don't come, that really bothers me. But it wouldn't bother me if I say, can you be here at 10 a.m. on Tuesday and you say, no, I can't be there for this reason. How about noon on Tuesday? Right. Like that's totally fine to me. It's not that I'm like this, this hard ass. Is that even a word? A hard ass? Uh, I don't know what a hard head, hard ass. I don't know what the word is, but um, I'm not like a stickler, strickler, stickler, man, fuck, I don't know any of my words today, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm willing to like do different things. It's just that if you say you're going to do something, I expect you to do it. Now, I think that's the biggest thing that really pisses me off. I got to get, I got to be more understanding. I have to realize that there are a lot of people that just weren't raised that way. What else pisses me off? Let's see here. Kyle pisses me off. <laughs> I hope you guys realize whatever it seems like Kyle and I are like in a some sort of debate on the podcast. It's always like friendly. I think that a lot of people, I don't know if they're just young or they just don't know us well enough, but even if it seems like we're in a heated argument and like truly mad at each other, we're not. We're not. I've never actually been in a fight with Kyle or actually got like truly mad at him. Um but I think like it's fair to say that since I spend so much time with Kyle, like I literally see him all the time, it's inevitable that 
I'm going to, there's going to be glimpses of me getting frustrated with him more than somebody else because I see him and I'm with him all the time. I work with him. I do this podcast with him. Um, he's a great guy. He's super hardworking. I love Kyle to death, but I, I think I have two more general categories for things that make me upset. I have no idea if this is even entertaining for you guys. I just thought I would talk about things that I want to fix about myself and then we can kind of see where, what progress has been made. Hopefully you guys can take something from this. I don't know. This is more obviously more serious than the other episodes because I can't be funny by myself um, if Kyle's not here. So, you know, we're just going to wing it. I'm doing my best. So hopefully you guys are following, following with me here. But um, the second one, I've experienced this with a lot of people in my life. Um, one thing that tends to kind of set me off and just lead me to eventually turn into a rage monster. Um, usually I'll, I'll end up getting out of it before I turn into the rage monster, which is, which is definitely better. But when people are unwilling to try and understand a perspective that they don't agree with, it's one of the most infuriating things. And like, there's certain people that you just can't argue with and you just have to accept the fact that they're not going to listen. And that's, that's one scenario like there's some people that you literally can't win. They're just not going to change no matter what. And in that case, it's pointless to even try and argue with them or even have a rational conversation because they're just locked into their thing. Even if you provide evidence, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change their viewpoint. Um, but one thing that just really bothers me, I'm going to use religion, for example, which obviously is super controversial. Um, but that's, I think, is a good example for thing for in order to describe this thing that frustrates me, but for religion, let's say you don't believe in any religion at all. You are a diehard atheist, right? And you believe that to be true. You think that religion is stupid and pointless and that it serves no purpose and that people are just brainwashed and they're wasting their time, wasting their life, whatever. Okay. There's a lot of people that are atheists, at least here in Seattle, that will not even have a com want to try and understand how religion is beneficial, how religion helps people, why people believe certain religions. Um, they won't like even try and put themselves in the mindset of the person who believes in a certain religion and try and understand why do they believe that. One thing that I feel like personally I'm good at is understanding like, for example, let's say someone who's Buddhist. Okay. I'm not Buddhist, but I took a world religions class and I, I learned a lot about it. I love learning about different religions. Now, I don't necessarily think that their view of the world is 100% true and accurate. I don't necessarily think that's how the world is set up, but I can listen to them. I can have a conversation with them. I would love to have conversations like that and understand why they believe that because that's fascinating and that like... I don't know why people get so locked into one thing. If you truly can't engage in a conversation with someone because you think, because you don't agree with their, their viewpoint, I feel like that says a lot about your viewpoint. I think it says that you're not very confident in what you believe because you're not even willing to try and hear something else because maybe it'll convince you. Maybe it'll open your eyes to something else. And I don't know. It, it really frustrates me when someone's like that stupid fucking Christian camp. Why are they going to that? Like, even if you're not Christian, I don't understand why you can't try and learn about how that's beneficial and why they believe that to be true. Like, I don't necessarily think that all the things they preach at a Christian camp are true, but I don't necessarily think like they're bad. I don't think it it's stupid or a waste of this person's time. Like, I think Mormonism, the stuff they believe, I think it's entirely untrue. I don't believe it at all. I, a lot of people think it's even close to a cult, but I'm never going to look at someone that's Mormon and be like, Oh my God, that fucking Mormon, like wasting their time. What are they doing? Like, that's so fucking stupid. Whatever it gets you through the day, man. If you want to believe in Mormonism, like go ahead. I don't give a shit. I don't get why people are so locked off about stuff like that. Another example is politics, man. I, I hate talking about politics on the show. Listen, I don't support Trump. A lot of people don't support Trump, but I don't understand why people can't even have a conversation about it. 
and there there are people that'll say they'll have a conversation about it and they're like oh yeah i'm i'm totally willing to listen to their viewpoint and they say that but then you try and talk to them about it and they're not listening to you at all they they say they're willing to talk about it and then you go and talk about it and they're just shutting it down before the, they're not even listening to anything you're saying um but like listen like i said i don't i don't support trump i think he's a piece of shit but i can talk to someone who does support trump and understand where they're coming from and why they believe what they believe i don't think it's true but i think it's like everybody has a perspective for a reason i don't think that everybody supports trump is a racist some people are some people are probably a piece of shit but there's some people that probably think that the policies that he's trying to enforce are actually beneficial for americans and whether or not you believe that to be true is up to you but do you guys get what i'm saying like i said <laughs> i didn't even finish college not the most educated guy but i still feel like i have a right to talk about some things that are maybe more intellectual than the the general dick and shit stuff that we talk about um but yeah man that just really bothers me i i am willing to talk about any topic with anybody and even if i entirely disagree i'm totally down to hear it i would love to be proven wrong about or get my viewpoint changed on things that i currently believe why do you care why do people need to believe the thing that they believe their whole life why are they so unwilling to hear any other viewpoint i don't know man it just here in seattle where a lot of it's like a really secular area not many people are religious um I just don't get why people are so close-minded to re talk, even talking about religion. Like I can't, you can't even talk about a Bible verse here and without someone like just giving like a smarky, snarky, is that the word? A snarky comment. Like people roll their eyes the second you talk about a, vi a Bible verse. Like even if I don't believe in the Bible verse, it doesn't mean that there's not truth behind it. Like even if you don't believe in the Bible and you don't think it's this like religious holy text, there could still be something to be learned from that or taken from that about life in general that could be really cool. Like the Bible is a book. I don't understand why you can't just like read a book even if you don't believe in it. Like dude, just tell yourself it's just a fiction story. And just go fucking read it. It's not gonna like poison you. I don't know, man. Like I said before, I don't really know where I stand with religion. I feel like I have a personal relationship with what I consider to be God. I do think God exists, 100%. Um, I don't really know if I consider myself Christian anymore. I was raised Christian, but I don't agree with a lot of this stuff. I don't think some of the things are true. But even at this point in my life, I still think like the Bible is a fucking insanely like precious piece of material. I'd be down to read any religious text. When I took the world religions class, I learned so much. That was truly one of the coolest classes I've ever taken. I learned so much about different religions and reading their religious texts and why they believe what they believe. And I don't know, man, I just, I think that there's value in trying to understand things you don't necessarily agree with. So moving on to the last thing that frustrates me that I'm going to try and get better at, um, to not get so heated is when I engage with people that are lazy and don't work hard. I've talked about this with Kyle before on the show and he was saying something like, well, why is it your right or like your responsibility to tell someone they, they need to work hard? And, and I see that viewpoint. I see like, oh, it's their life. They can do whatever they want. But I personally believe, I think you're doing the world a disservice if you're not working hard in whatever you're doing. I think that it's almost like a responsibility of being alive to put full effort into whatever you're doing um for example one thing that i'll i will always be upset with i don't even think I'll, I'll ever have patience for this when i go to like a restaurant for example let's say chipotle and the worker is just going so fucking slow and does not care at all to go faster they're literally like almost going slow on purpose and then like there's going to be a line at the door it's a busy time of day and they just don't give a shit they're going as slow as they want people are upset people are in a rush and they're not putting any effort in whatsoever i think that is just completely unacceptable even if you hate your fucking job so much you don't want to be there i just 
I never think in any scenario that's acceptable to like slack off. Obviously, there's times when you're going to be tired. Like, let's say you're working at Chipotle. You got like a one hour of sleep. You feel terrible. You're super sick. That's okay. Go slower. But it, I just, you still have to put in whatever effort you can, I think, at, at anything in life. Like when I was in college, I hated it so much. And I knew that I was going to drop out. Like I was for at least a semester leading up to it. I knew I wasn't going to stay in school. I had no desire to. I was planning to get out. I still put in 100%. I did all my assignments. I just, it's like a moral, it's a moral thing to me. I just, I don't know why I feel wrong about it. Um, I don't think that you can, for me personally, I cannot feel good about myself in general if I half-ass anything. And um, yeah, but I, I think that one thing I can really get better at is trying to realize that once again, people weren't raised the same way I was raised. And there's going to be people whose parents just let them slack off and let them do whatever. And there was no consequences or no punishment if they're being lazy because I don't know, they just, for whatever reason, it was just a lenient childhood. It's going to be a lot harder to get that person to realize that you should work hard. Not only because I think you're doing a disservice to the world, but because it makes you feel so much better. Every single time in my life when I've like, if I skipped a class, which I've only done a couple times, I felt terrible. <laughs> now, that's just me personally. And like I said, I have to realize that not everybody will feel terrible if they skip a class or not everybody will feel bad if they don't try hard. But when you do put in effort in things, I generally think it'll make your life better because... Everybody I've talked to that has worked hard in their life, it's it's done good things for them. So last thing before we wrap it up here is obviously, like I said, a shorter episode. I have no idea if people will even like this. Um, maybe this episode will get way less plays than usual, which I totally expect if this just flops, that's okay with me. But what is not okay with me is missing an upload. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this for those of you who did stick around and care about me talking one-on-one -on -one with you guys. But before we wrap it up, um, this one segment that I want to introduce in season three of the show, which probably by the time you guys are listening to this is already happening or already passed, but I wanted to introduce the segment um, where I basically give you guys movie recommendations. I haven't thought of a witty title for the, the segment yet, but um, I'm just going to use this as like a test run for me. So I'm big into movies. I love film. I love cinema. Um, my probably honestly my favorite art form. I, I actually in high school up until college, I did not give a shit about movies. I honestly thought they were just a waste of time. I was like, why would I want to sit through this two hour movie when I could like go hang out with my friends? Um, at the time I was really into video games. So I was like, I could play like two to three whole matches of counter strike, or I could play call of duty or, you know, any game. Why would I just sit here? and mindlessly watch this uh, this movie. But I've really grown to love them, and I think that there's a lot of... Uh, I don't know. I learn a lot about life through them. I never have been personally a big, you know, action movie, like, goofy superhero stuff. Like, I know people love superhero movies, but I feel like... I don't know if a film purist is the right word, but I'm much more of a realistic movie guy. Like I want something that I could believe that could happen in this real world. Um, but anyways, I want to recommend some movies because I, I, the last four years, I've really got into them. I've watched a bazillion movies. I love them. So a movie that I actually watched last night that I'm going to recommend to all you guys. If you have uh, Amazon or Amazon Prime, I believe it's an Amazon Prime original movie or it was picked up by Amazon Prime or something, but it's called Arctic. Um, it should still be on there, but it was this this director. It was his like film debut, and I saw like a fun fact that the director of that movie actually started out as a YouTuber doing just like short films on YouTube, and uh, like 10 years later or something, submitted this uh, film to the Cannes or Con Film Festival. I have no idea how to say it, but this movie, his first movie he ever made, it got a 10-minute standing ovation. Do you guys realize how long 10 minutes is? That's a quarter of this episode. A quarter of what you guys have listened to of people just standing up, probably people crying, 
just just clapping and screaming for 10 fucking minutes man i 10 minutes is a long time when you actually just sit there and like experience 10 minutes that's a long time um so anyways the movie's called arctic probably the first like 20 minutes of this movie not a single word is said that like to me almost sucks me in more because it so reliant on really good acting and if you guys are skeptical about a movie with very little dialogue i really encourage you guys to watch this movie in particular because he probably says less than 50 words probably less than 30 words this entire movie and i'm not even joking it's like over two hours long but this guy basically this is not a spoiler um this is literally in like the description of the movie but he's stuck in like antarctica or in the arctic somewhere and his plane crashed and uh he's literally by himself like the only survivor it was a little plane he's he's a pilot and he's probably been there for we don't know how long but he's trying to decide if he wants to like leave and venture out through the arctic and try and get to civilization or get to somebody that can find him because he's been there for a while no luck of anybody coming to save him and anyways without too much being told or giving too much away eventually he decides to venture out and make the trek and I, this movie is just so beautiful um i might sound like an, a film nerd right here a lot of you guys might not care about cinema that much but the idea in and of itself of being stuck in the fucking arctic and having to try and survive when you are nowhere near any humans at all the only life form anywhere near is fucking fish and polar bears how scary would that be i i i don't know like that's truly one of my biggest fears and kyle and i in the past in in a past episode were debating where would be the worst places to get stranded and where would you probably die and this confirmed in my mind that the arctic would probably actually be one of the worst ones like i'd rather be in a forest i'd rather be in a desert the arc actually i don't know desert might be scary too but just the arctic the fact that he's so fucking far away from anybody and it's so fucking cold man i don't know this is just it blew my mind i was sucked in the whole movie and i would recommend it to anybody um it's just really cool man and the actor is like a pretty famous actor he's been in a bunch of different stuff so anyways with all that being said I want to thank you guys all so much for listening to this weird uh, one-off episode of Peak to Middle School. Um, if you're new here, not all the episodes are like this. They're actually not like this at all, but I'm recording this back in November of 2019, and this is just going to be a storage one for the day when something happens where we can't upload for whatever reason. So thank you guys for sticking with us. One thing I would love to ask you guys to do if, you're, if you've made it this far is to go leave a review and a rating on the Apple Podcast app. If you have an iDevice and you want to just search Peak to Middle School, tap five stars and then write something nice. It literally takes 30 seconds and it would mean a lot to us because we're trying to get to 100. You can follow me at Hey Narwhal on Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow the podcast at Pim's Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We actually have a bunch of followers on TikTok. People love it over there for whatever reason. Um, yeah, the biggest thing you guys can do to support us and the show if you've been around for a while is just to tell your friends, you know, tell your coworkers about this new thing. If you have somebody who's like bored or needs something to do to pass the time or they're on a road trip, like road trips are awesome for podcasts. Really just doing anything like putting us on your story or uh, telling your granny, you know, anything really would mean so much to us. And feel free to always message us on Instagram. We get every message. We respond to everybody and we love messaging with you guys. So thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this weird episode. If not, I'm sorry. Things will be back to normal whenever the next episode is up, which will be in literally three days, right? Three days in between each episode. Yeah. So thank you all so much. Have a great day. And I will talk to you guys next time. Goodbye.